Hi, this is Robin Bremer, and today I want to share with you about communion. Communion to me has become something that is life-changing. It's, um, it's a very powerful thing. To me, communion is like um, taking my vitamins or taking medicine, but it's better because it heals all sicknesses, sicknesses and diseases and once you get a revelation of communion and what it actually means that it's not a ritual but it's something that happens supernaturally in the spirit realm and at the same time it happens in the physical realm I'm gonna just go over it a little bit I'm gonna try to cover as much of it as I can in this uh, video I looked up uh, what blood does in the body and basically this is what it does it transports the removal of waste. It transports oxygen, hormones, nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. And so when I take communion, if you look up in the Bible, communion, or actually if you start with anything to do with food, in the garden, Adam and Eve were deceived when they, they ate something, they put something in their mouth that was physical but also was spiritual when they disobeyed God and they ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil their spiritual eyes were closed and their spiritual eyes were open at the same time I don't want to explain what I mean just pray about it but so by eating physical food it did something in the spiritual realm also. So you can go all the way back to that place and see that food is very important. Now, if you come up to to, to the time when Jesus, uh, when the Israelites were being delivered out of uh, bondage, they were to take the lamb and they were supposed to eat every part of the lamb and then the next morning they exited out of that land and they had to have strength and so they were supposed to take the blood of the lamb and smear that on the blood post and then when the death angel passed over the house to kill the firstborn none of the Israelites children firstborn animals or children were killed because the blood was on their doorposts and they had eaten the, the, the lamb the sacrificial lamb and that's what a uh, Passover is and when Jesus came he he came and died for paid the price for all of our sins like the lamb does but this was that was a Passover lamb now Jesus became our Passover lamb uh, dying for all of our sins and he became, came to earth as a man uh, was empowered by the Holy Spirit like we are he lived a sinless life and he died and he paid the price for our sins because sin always demands um, justice and the shedding of blood is the payment for the price of sins. So Jesus died for all of our sins. Now he is called the Lamb of God, the spotless Lamb of God. And he uh, participated in communion. I'm looking at my hair here. <laughs> he participated in communion. And he said, eat this, drink this wine and eat eat this bread this is my body and this is my blood and if you eat this then you will have life in you and if you look at Leviticus 17 11 it says for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I give it to you the blood it is to you upon the altar to make atonements for your souls for it is the blood that makes atonement for the souls for it is the life of the flesh its blood sustains its life so Jesus' blood and Jesus' body was died and shed the blood for us. And he said, do this in remembrance of me every time you uh, drink the blood and eat the body. Now, he, in, in uh, the days when they exited out, uh, that was uh, a lamb and flatbread. And today it is grape juice and uh, bread or crackers or something like that. It's a representative. But even though it's a representative of the blood and body of Jesus, it still has power. Because everything we do in the 
natural world affects the spirit realm and the spirit realm affects the natural realm. They are intertwined and interact with each other. Now in John 6, 53, Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And then he said in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, he took the bread, he gave thanks, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup and he said, This is the cup of the new covenant, my blood, in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim. Proclaim means to proclaim, to public, publicly or publish the Lord's death till he comes. So what you're doing when you take communion is you're actually uh, reminding the demonic. And every, let me turn this this way so you don't have that. Sun, sun is coming down. Let me get over here against my house here. Um, now I have this purple ring around my head, so I hope this works for you. Um, oops, <laughs> that's even worse yet. Okay, so where was I? So um, you are publicly saying to whoever is listening that Jesus died. And why is that important? Okay, now, when you proclaim his death, this is why that that's important. Sorry. Okay. Uh, if you go to Hebrews 2.15, it says, Through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to the bondage of death and to bondage. Okay, also Romans 6. Uh, 6 5 says we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory we also should walk in the newness or the glory of life so by um, co every time you take communion you are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes you are saying look Jesus died for my death for my sins his death was my death and because he died for my sins, I'm, I'm just announcing I am righteous, I am debt free because Jesus paid for my sins. Okay, so you are proclaiming that he is dead for your sins. You're also proclaiming that once somebody writes out a will, it is not into effect until the person who wrote the will dies. And Jesus died, so you're proclaiming his death. And that blood is the new covenant for you. Okay, so I'm trying to... Maybe get this thing a little bit higher or something. <laughs> okay, there. Oh, now you got the sun in your eyes anyway. <laughs> oh, well. You're just going to have to put up with it. Okay, so, so communion is proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. And by his death, it says this is the new covenant. The old covenant, the old rules, the old laws are dead. There is a new law. You're being led by the Holy Spirit. He put his laws in your heart. Okay, you're being led by the Holy Spirit, not the Ten Commandments. So you're proclaiming the Old Covenant is gone. Uh, this is the New Covenant. It's sealed in the blood of Jesus. And you're saying, look, Jesus rose from the dead. I now have authority over the death, over death because I'm in Christ Jesus. Jesus is in me. I'm no longer in subject to bondage to fear of death. Now also, by death, in Romans 1, 4, you're declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of Holiness by resurrection from the dead. So there again, um, by taking communion, you're proclaiming the Lord's death, and by proclaiming his death, you're saying, hey, he's dead and he resurrected. So that proves he's the Son of God. Now, you also can go to Romans 6.10, and it says, knowing that Christ having, having been raised from the dead, death no longer has dominion over him. And you also can look at 2 Timothy 1.10, Jesus Christ who has abolished which means to render idle, unemployed, inactive, inoperative death and brought life and immortality, immortality to light through the gospel. And then you can go to Colossians 1.22 and it says, And you who were once enemies in your mind by wicked works through death to present you holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. So through his death, your spirit becomes perfect. You, the Word of God says that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. You're not two spirits, you're now one spirit. 
okay? And you are righteous not by your works, but you are righteous by His death. You are righteous because of what He did. And it says right here that you were, you did have a guilt consciousness, a sin consciousness, but now, if you go back and look in um, Hebrews and where it goes through uh, the sacrifices once offered, uh, could not make the worshipers perfect because they still had a consciousness of sin. If you go back and look at that, all the steps of why the, why they did the sacrifices, you'll see that um, they couldn't cleanse their, the goal was to cleanse them from sin and to cleanse their mind from being conscious of sin. So here by Jesus' death, you're saying what, uh, we were enemies by our wicked works in our mind just because we had a guilty conscience. But it says, let me read it to you. And you who once were enemies in your mind by wicked works through death to present you holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. Colossians 1.23. Now, in your mind, so you're blameless in his sight. You are holy and blameless and above reproach in Jesus, in God's sight because you are one spirit. So by death, you're saying, I am righteous and I'm in right standing with God. So that's another reason to take communion. You're proclaiming that. And see, what I do when I take communion, and it's hot out here, so sorry for sweating. But when I take communion, I take my little book here, and uh, I go through these things. I go, I looked up all the scriptures that had death that had to do with Jesus, and I, I say, okay, I'm, I'm proclaiming his death now. What does that mean? And I say, listen here. It means that I, through his death, have been delivered from the power of death. The devil is no longer in control of death. I've been very free from the bondage of fear of death. And I, then I go on and say, and through the death, I walk in the glory of God. Through death, I have the spirit of holiness living in me. Through death of Jesus, while I take this communion, the death no longer has dominion over me because I'm in Christ Jesus and Christ is in me and I baptize into his death. And, and, and by death, I was once enemies by a guilty conscience, by sin consciousness wicked works in my mind but through death because of the blood and death of Jesus I am holy blameless and above reproach in his sight and in my sight and in the devil's sight in Jesus name and I just proclaim that then I take the the communion the blood and this is why the blood is so important excuse me it says in Ephesians 1 7 in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins so when, you, when you're taking uh, the communion cup, the representative of the blood, uh, you're reminding yourself, you're, through this whole process, what you're doing is you're building your faith. You're reminding yourself of who you are in Christ, what he did for you. You're going through the symbolicness of physically eating his uh, symbol of his body and his blood. But spiritually, you're nourishing your physical body with the spiritual body and blood of Christ inside of your spirit that manifests in your body healing. Okay, so the blood of Jesus, Ephesians, okay, 1 7. Then Ephesians 2, it says, We have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. And then I just would say something like, Father, I thank you. According to Ephesians 2, I have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. I have a relationship with you. I hear your voice. I hear you speaking to me father i'm seated in heavenly places with christ jesus at the right hand of god the holy spirit is inside of me father i thank you that i've been brought near to you then i go on to colossians 1 20 and ephesians uh, i mean and i say 53 which says we have peace through his blood and if you read i say 53 the chastisement for our peace was upon him and if you read what peace means it means all prosperity health wholeness covenant relationship means all kinds of awesome stuff and also Colossians 3.13 so then I say Father I thank you that I have peace because of the blood of Jesus I thank you for this peace I thank you that I have and then I name these things then you go could go on to Romans 5.10 we have been justified by the blood by his blood saved from the wrath of him and that's another good thing study the wrath of God we are not appointed to wrath we are not going to have anything to do with God's wrath God's not mad at us no matter what no matter what mistakes we do, God is not mad at us and we will not have no wrath from God. It says we are reconciled to God through through his death. Then in Hebrews 9.15 it says the blood of Christ cleanses my conscience. 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 That's a word. I have a hard time with that word. 
Okay, so it cleanses us, so we don't have, we're Christ conscious, we're not 